If you, oh, you who believe, if you aid the cause of Allah, He will aid you. Plant your feet firmly. And this is the month of charity as well. And in a hadith reported in Tirmidhi, Prophet ﷺ said, the best charity is the one that is given in Ramadan. And while we give shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all that has given us individually and as a society and as a community, I'm reminded of this beautiful verse, the beautiful hadith of Prophet ﷺ, in which he said, the best insurance that the abundance you have received will continue. The best insurance that the blessing and the abundance you have received will continue is to show shukr or gratitude for the abundance Allah has given you. So we focus a lot in this month on charity. And we have a lot of different ways of we giving a charity. And, per, and I personally, and I'm sure all of you, have a lot of questions as to how best to carry out this charity, this obligation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And I will sort of verse, uh, give a, uh, recite a verse from the Quran on this topic. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِكُونَ قُلْ مَا أَنْفَكْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ وَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ أَكْرَبِينَ وَالْيَتَامَا وَالْمَسَاكِنِ وَبْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ أَلِيمٌ They ask you about charity spend on a variety of causes. The first one is your family. That is clear. We got to take care of our own family, the near and dear ones to us. Beyond that, Living in this context where we live in, in North America, in Seattle, in Redmond, we, have a, we are torn by a lot of different priorities. Do I give it to a few organizations in a big way? Or do I spread across as many organizations so that, inshallah, we get the reward of all, the all of the efforts that are happening? Do we give it to a local cause? Or do we give it to global causes where you might feel that, or we might feel that the needs are vast and many? Even when it comes to local, do I give it to my local mosque, or do I give it to local or national organizations? Do I give it to building a, a new mosque, or how do I think about sustaining an existing mosque? I don't think there are simple answers that I can provide for that work that works for all of us but these are questions that I struggle with there are two fundraisers this weekend that inshallah you know we have to help other masajids but these are questions that we have and and we think about it and each one of you might have a different way how you think about it but I wanted to provide some thoughts on how we should think about our own community, and how we think about the aspirations that we have. For, for any community to flourish, it needs a strong foundation. That's why when Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, the very first thing he established was a mosque, not as a place to pray, but as a community to function as a community where just not for the weak of the heart or the strong of the, the faith, all of us can come and find our journey in, through this faith. They also s say that, you know, if you take an example, if, if you're personally not well, you can help others. That's why it's interesting that if you're, if you, if you, you know, when you go on a plane and they give you the, you know, preparation with, uh, instructions that tell you in the case of an emergency first put the mask on yourself before you help the children although you you would expect that you want to help the people that are less capable of helping themselves but if you cannot help yourself then you can't help so if you don't have a strong community 
our ability to support a lot of the causes that are dear to us is going to be not there. And you can see that as this community has grown, so has so many organizations that have thrived and grown. The second observation I want to make is that there is one thing about having a building, but the most important thing that we have is the human potential. The question is, are we building the human potentials that could produce the likes of Sahaba from this community? that will allow us to produce the likes of Muhammad Ali in this community, that will allow us to produce scientists of the caliber of Ibn Sina from this community. And I'll give you two examples of thinking about what, a, what the building does, what the civilization does. And I will go to Andalusia for both these examples. And if any of you have been to Andalusia, you will know what I'm talking about. I had a chance to visit both of them. You can go to Cordoba. The first example I'm going to go is Cordoba, al Cordoba. You have a mosque that has been sort of converted into a church, the beautiful mosque in Cordoba. But if you go there, while you see the mosque, what you hear is the civilization and the impact the people that lived in, in Cordoba left for generations to come. It is because they invested in the human capital. And if you go a few hundred miles, I think to the east, you will come to Granada. You see a beautiful building, palace, but as you walk through that palace, it pains you to see the history that happened and the failure of leadership. So the point of this is that it's not important to establish buildings. It is important to grow the human potential, that you leave a lasting impact on the people and the civilization. The third thing that I want to talk about is the importance of excellence and consistency in everything that we do. And this is something we strive. And sometimes, if you just come and to a few events and see, why do we spend in a way that we, why do we do things the way we do? Because for us, excellence and consistency, excellence, not excellence one time, excellence and consistency is so important to, to internalize and, and do it. And it doesn't happen by accident. Behind every excellence that you see, a lot of sweat and blood that goes behind it. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also emphasizes in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah the khalaka. And he who makes excellent in everything that he creates. And in a hadith, Prophet said, Verily, Allah has prescribed excellence in everything. And I can tell you that there are many times we have had to make decisions that on the face of it, you would question, why are we doing this? But if you step back and understand why we are doing it, and, and the long-term impact of what we are doing it, you will understand the, the vision and the leadership behind that. And I can tell you that every time people, uh, let me step back and tell you, if you have a visitor that came to the masjid one time, the impression they will take back is, wow, this is a ma mashallah beautiful building. If you talk to somebody who has come to the masjid multiple times and ask them about the impression that they have, invariably it will be one of two things. And I, my wife actually met the human services director of Red City of Redmond, she didn't know she was from MAPS, and he said two things. One, these are very hospitable people, very welcoming. And number two, they love the food they provide. This is how you attract the hearts and minds of the people. This is about building the human capital, 
and building certain ex behavior, once they know, then it makes it easy for them, the barriers that they have, the misconceptions that they have, makes it goes away. It opens their heart to learn what it is that Islam teaches them. The fourth thing that I want to talk about is what I mentioned to you a little bit in a, in a f 10 days ago or a week ago when I did the khatira of uh, Surat al Nahal. We got to have a spirit that we give more than we take. That, in essence, is what the beauty of the surah, the, the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving honor to name a surah by the Nahal, by B. The characteristic of the B that stands out is that it gives more than it takes from the flower in the form of honey that it produces. And in fact, if you look at every surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored an insect, whether it is a spider, whether it is an ant, there is a beautiful characteristics that these creations have, which is the spirit of resilience. and hard work. So as a community, we have to ask ourselves, are we giving more than we are taking? And one of the beauty of Surat the, the Bees is that it is an equal worker opportunity. It's not an 80-20 rule, where 80% of the work is done by 20% of the people. The bee colony is such that all of them share the burdens so that it makes it easy for us as a uh, as in terms of what they want to accomplish. And the last thing that I want to leave you today, to me this is the most important thing. And a lot of times, this is what sort of cause, causes some friction, some little bit of uneasiness amongst us. And that is, it is easy to build a community that comes together based on narrow understanding of a belief or a creed. An example I would give you is an Amish community. It's a well-knit community, but they are bound by a very narrow set of beliefs. I'm not judging right or wrong, but that is their conviction. But if you want to build a community that has 42 nationalities that is represented here in this very building, right now, how do we build it? It is, this is where we have to make sure that those that have the strongest of the faith and those that are weakest of the faith have an equal opportunity to come and grow in their own ways, in their own pace. In today's khutbah, Imam Malik talked about the impact that Muhammad Ali had in this society. The question we have to ask ourselves is, if Muhammad Ali was here, growing up in this community, would we have, in his early stages, would we have tolerated some of the things he said and did? Or would we have banished from the mosque because he didn't confirm to that our definition and we didn't allow his spiritual journey to grow at his own pace. And I'll leave you with this thought. In English there's a proverb that says familiarity breeds contempt. I would actually differ, change it a little bit. Familiarity breeds indifference. Familiarity breeds it. You come every day, you take everything for granted. Alhamdulillah, we have a nice, everything is going fine. Perhaps there's no problem. But what you don't know is, there's lots of people that are sweating it out every day to make sure that one day the chicken got bad in, in, uh, during, uh, during one of the iftars. They got to immediately scramble and figure out what are they going to do to feed 500 people sitting here. So there are lots of things that are happening. There is almost $100,000 of expenses just in feeding people during the month of Ramadan. The question is, 
you know, are we willing to commit it to continuing this spirit, what it takes to build this community forward, are we going to be indifferent? Let's not take what we have for granted. We got here with a lot of blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a lot of your duas, a lot of efforts from all of you here. We have a long way to go. As Imam Malik said, we have just, the journey has just begun. Every time you feel like we have been hit with a tragedy, Alhamdulillah, we managed to overcome it, including what happened in Orlando. It made us a better, as much as we hated, it made us a better community. So I ask all of us, and particularly the sisters, don't take what you have for granted. It comes with a lot of people that have been working hard to make it happen. You put your blood and sweat to make yourself heard. Don't take it for granted. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa barik salli wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.
الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين متكين على فرش بطائنها من استغرق وجن الجنتين دان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيهن قاصرات الطرف لم يتمذهن لم يتمذهن إنس قبلهم ولا جان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كأنهن الياقوت والمرجان فبأي آلاء رب 
ربكما تكذبان هل جزاء الإحسان إلا الإحسان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.